You're listening to the official podcast of Asbury University, produced by students with God-honoring conversations that inform, edify, and encourage. This is Asbury. We explore culture and current topics through a Christian worldview, promoting a well-balanced life, and we empower our community to belong, become, and be set apart. I'm your host, Abby Lobb. Welcome to This is Asbury. Welcome to This is Asbury. I'm excited to bring you this conversation that happened last fall between our very own Mark Whitworth and University of Kentucky women's basketball coach Kyra Elsey. I'm excited for you to hear their conversation where Kyra discusses her faith journey and all things sports. And I just think this is a really fun conversation to have. Kyra was here last fall speaking with our students in chapel, and she so graciously took some time to join us in the studio. So let's listen to that conversation. My name is Mark Whitworth, and uh, I serve as the Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics and University Communications here. And it's my privilege to welcome uh, Kyra Elsey, the head women's basketball coach at the University of Kentucky. And Kyra has just spoken in chapel to our students. And uh, thanks so much for being here, particularly in the season. You guys played uh, yesterday. And so we really are honored by the fact that you would take time and and pour into our students and encourage them. And so thank you and welcome to Asbury University. Thank you so much. It was an honor to be here. It's my first time. Uh, it was beautiful in uh, chapel, and I love the energy um, of the young people that were there. And that's part of uh, the journey to inspire, impact, and influence um, young people. Well, we are thrilled to have you here. And so what we're going to do is just talk a little bit about how God how God calls us to live lives of being set apart and trusting in his goodness and his guidance in our lives. And so I want to just start out and, and just ask you about your coaching career and maybe what is the most fulfilling and rewarding aspect of, of being a coach? You know, it's so funny. Um, I had the great honor to play for Coach Pat Summit. Uh, rest in peace, Coach, uh, gone too soon. Um, but my senior year, I wanted to work at the Wide World of Sports at Disney. Um, I no longer wanted to play. I didn't love it enough to train like you needed to train. Um, so Coach Summit said, I think you would make a great coach. I was like, nah, too too hard, um, too time-consuming, a big responsibility. But at that time, Virginia Tech had a job opening. Um, I was thinking... Disney, Sun, and still be around basketball. Um, but lo and behold, 22 years later, um, I got the coaching bug. I took the job at Virginia Tech. So I guess coach is always right. That's right. She was a, she was a, an outstanding leader and, and obviously a tremendous coach. As I mentioned to you, we've got a lot in common. Uh, you and I both uh, started our careers uh, in in coaching and me athletic administration at the University of Tennessee. Uh, know a lot of the same people down there, and and really have been blessed by that. As you reflect back on how you've ascended to becoming a head coach, who are some of the who are some of the key people that have influenced you? Obviously, you mentioned Coach Summit, but I'm sure there are a few others. You know, obviously Coach Summit, but there's been so many others that have uh, poured into me and and blessed. Um, me with the knowledge that I have um, today, you know, Coach Mickey DeMoss is one of my mentors, Coach Matthew Mitchell. I would not be who I am without him um, as far as a coach and leading a program. Coach Bonnie Hendrickson, who was an amazing coach, Mary Taylor Cowles, Holly Warlick. I just have so many. So blessed for an amazing circle. Yes. And you were so kind to share kind of your faith journey and your heritage of faith this morning in chapel. Uh, who are some of the key influencers there as you have walked with Christ uh, as, a, as a young child and now as, a, as an SEC head coach? Um, you know, I think my spiritual foundation was laid early by my mom, my family. Um, my grandmother was big in my life. And uh, as I shared in chapel, we went to church every Sunday. You're going to Sunday school. So it just became a staple of who I was. And um, 
even when you can veer off the path as you go on your own, um, you always go back to your roots and your foundation. And that was uh, a very spiritual place for me. And it has been the center of my life. And Lord knows I have needed God um, a lot of days. Yes. So with the demands and challenges of being a head coach at, at the SEC level, how do you stay grounded? Well, God, um, I stay in the Word. Um, I play a lot of gospel music, um, but also surround myself with people uh, that are aligned in the spiritual journey. Um, pastor Gaines and Sarah Gaines, who are the pastor and first lady of Consolidated Baptist, you know, they really pour into me and um, help keep me uh, stable. But, you know, you evolve uh, with your walk um, in Christ, and I'm blessed to uh, have a foundation. As you now are just in the first few weeks of your competitive season, uh, what is God teaching you? Uh, I know you've got a new team uh, without one of the all-time greats in the SEC. So what is God teaching you, and, and, and how can you rely on him in trying to form uh, a new team without uh, a standout player like you had? Yes, we do miss Ryan Howard. Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, she texts me often uh, from Italy. I would love to still have her, but she's gone on to do uh, bigger and better things. But I think right now in this season, God is teaching me patience. Um, and I don't have a lot of patience. So um, I think this is what I'm learning with this new team. So um, as a coach to have six freshmen um, and then four transfers, but 10 new total that you are teaching your system to, I promise you, I leave practicing games just exhausted trying to teach them nuances, but it's so fun. It's so rewarding. Um, and they are super competitive. So it's given me a new perspective on coaching. Um, you know, I spoiled the first two seasons as I had veterans across the board and one freshman. And so to have it flip this year, um, you know, it's made me be a better person and a better coach. Right. What advice, you got a chance to meet our women's basketball team, and, and you're an acquaintance of Chad Mays, our head basketball coach here at Asbury, and he's built a really nice program for us. But what words of advice would you give our student athletes, particularly our women's basketball team, as as they, uh, they are dealing with uh, the loss of a the all-time leading scorer here at Asbury, and so they're trying to find uh, their way without their, their leader on the floor? You know, the advice that I would give them is everybody play their role. You're not going to replace a Ron Howard or the leading scorer at Asbury, but collectively you can get the job done. And if everyone gives their best, um, you work hard, you believe in each other, you bring positive energy, um, collectively you have a chance to be better. And when you when you face adversity, that's when the real team is built. Who's going to stand up or who's going to lay down under the pressure? And that's that would be the advice that I would give them. Step up to the challenge. Everybody wants to be the one, right, when it's not their turn. But now it's your turn, and what are you going to do with the opportunity? Right, right. So changing gears real quickly, tell me a little bit about your family. I have an amazing family. Obviously, um, my mom raised me. I was an only child. Some would say I'm spoiled, but I would say extra loved. Um, but, you know, I'm married. Uh, I've been married 10 years. Um, we have a little boy, Jackson, who is six, and he thinks he's 16. Um, and we have an older son uh, from my husband's previous relationship, Devin, who's 27, uh, so I'm blessed beyond what I deserve. Um, my husband is everything. Uh, he's a man of God and really is the spiritual leader in our household. He was raised, his grandfather was a pastor. And so uh, we have that connection in common, spiritually based. I'm curious, uh, you had a chance now to work with my friend and longtime colleague, Mitch Barnhart. 
he's certainly a leader in the industry and has made it very clear where he stands spiritually and has a vibrant walk with Christ. What have you learned from Mitch Barnhart? I love Mr. Barnhart. He is amazing. Uh, he's one of the best in the business, um, but, you know, his humbleness and also um, he's not afraid to share his spiritual journey. Um, but I like um, that he is loyal. Um, even when I hit tough times, um, you know, last season, I always received a call from Mr. Barnhart and, you know, with encouraging words. Uh, but one of the things that really lasts um, in my mind was I, I I received a phone call like 11 o'clock after we lost like our eighth game. So I was like, oh, this can't be good. And he was like, listen, kiddo, we build to last, not for quick fixes. I have confidence in you. So his ability to lead through adversity is what I've learned from him. That's great. That's great. So as we are looking uh, toward Thanksgiving, I've got to ask you, what are you grateful now? What are you grateful for right now as you think about uh, just starting the season, your third year as a head basketball coach at Kentucky? I'm grateful for everything. Um, really, honestly, you know, I'm blessed beyond what I deserve along with my family. And so I'm grateful for friends. I'm grateful for family. I'm grateful for health. I'm grateful to be the head coach at the University of Kentucky, to be back home in the home state. I mean, there's just so many things to be grateful for. And I think as you get older, um, you realize how grateful uh, and blessed you truly are. Well, Coach, just, uh, just know from the bottom of our hearts how much we appreciate you being here. My last question is, how can the Asbury community pray for you? Well, it's been an honor to be here. Thank you all so much. You all have been uh, so kind and hospitable. I would just uh, ask for you all to continue to pray um, as I lead a program, um, young ladies who are trying to figure out life, um, a staff, and pray for health and happiness. Well, we can certainly do that for you. Coach Elsie. it's our privilege and honor to have you here, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of This is Asbury. To learn more about Asbury University, visit asbury.edu.